So really, a lot of it is about expanding to that Locker's product, making it more usable, easier to the user, easier to the admin, having more remediations tool. But the biggest announcement was really our Cyber Hero Managed Detection and Response, where the Cyber Heroes are now responding in their record times to potential risks on your servers, on your endpoints, and what's happening. So you can sleep at night, not worrying if something bad is going to happen, someone's going to be looking at your servers and also monitoring the logs. I think the main thing is that they that people see that, hey, this is a company that's serious about security, where their products are continuing to enhance to deliver value to them, and that we care and will continue to deliver good product. I want to talk about Ops, because Ops has been the most, the biggest change to the Threat Locker platform in the last three years, I'd say, since we released Ring Fencing. And it, it, it is important, because when we see bad things happening, we want to alert you. We want you to know about these things. And what Ops has allowed you to do is take all of the knowledge from Threat Locker, cross-reference with all known indicators of compromise, well blocking in advance. But just like with Threat Locker allow listing, what we found is by us being responsible, we make better products because we have to work with it. We have to deal with it. And if we're looking after your approvals, we make better products because we're having to do that every day and we want those approvals to be better every day. So the, the biggest and the most exciting thing we're announcing today is the same cyber heroes that are offering you 23 second response team. Same cyber heroes that approve your software, validate your software and research your products. We're now announcing that they're also offering cyber hero detection and response services. So in the event that you see something bad happening, or we see something bad happening in your environment, the cyber heroes are gonna have your back. And I wanna demonstrate this. This is where Rob's gonna fail. <laughs> I'll walk off stage this way. We're gonna demonstrate what this looks like in the real world. So do, uh, do you wanna switch back to the computer? And we want to connect to, or you want me to be the bad guy? You're the bad guy. Yes. You're bad Danny. I'm so, good Danny, apparently. You're good we Danny. Hacker Danny, we've Defender Danny. OK, so this is either going to work epically well, or it's going to fail disaster. Hilariously. OK, so I have a special server here, which I'm going to connect to. And it, if it hasn't been hacked, it's been open on RDP for nearly an hour on the internet. <laughs> So I'm going to connect to my special server on the internet through RDP, which is in AWS. And I don't have a red screen, which means it's good. And I have no dual factor on it because I'm a true victim. <laughs> OK, but I'm actually the bad guy. So great. I'm on your server. What can I steal? I want to encrypt your files. I want to get your money. What's the first thing I'm going to do when I go on your machine? I've forgotten what I'm supposed to do now. Um, I think. You might as well scan the network and see what else is out there. Yes, thank you. Thank you for helping the bad guy out. So I'm going to run advanced IP scanner, because that's the best thing to do. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it got blocked. OK, so I'm not going to run advanced IP scanner, because it got blocked. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go and try and create a new user account, I think. So I'm going to go into computer management, because this is what bad guys typically do. Let's create myself a new user account. So, oh. so I have a pop-up in the bottom right corner of the screen asking me if I'm an IT professional on the computer. I'm Are you an work. IT professional on the computer? Um, well, I'm a bad IT professional. So I can scan this QR code, but I'm not going to scan the QR code because I don't have access to it anyway. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep working because I don't care what this guy does. So I'm going to go and create this new user account. Uh, now, by the way, that pop-up came from Threat Locker Cyber Hero Response Team. So somebody has noticed I'm doing something that might be suspicious, not definitely is, and I'm, they're questioning, am I on the machine um, um, to authenticate myself, or am I not on the machine? Danny, I've got a phone call coming through. I'm guessing it might be our uh, friends in the Cyber Hero Management team. That seems a bit quick, but I'm going to keep working fast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so can we answer that call? It's supposed yeah, to be fed into Bluetooth. This. I want to see if this works. This is supposed to be in the Bluetooth. Hello, Danny. This is Jerry calling from Auto Care Warranty Services. <laughs> <laughs> OK, cyber heroes aren't that quick. OK, OK. Spam call, spam call. Hang up, hang up. <laughs> <laughs> I, OK, let's, so I, 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 I thought that was a bit quick. Uh, it was okay. a bit quick. 
This is what happens when Rob Continue turns his phone off silence. OK, so I'm now going to do this. So maybe you want to show these guys what's happening in the background as the good guys. So I'm going to minimize my server, and you can go into Colchi Portal. OK, and so we have a Colchi Portal. If we go into our response center and we go into our threats, we can see what's been happening. So we can see, basically, the entire series of events. Now, this is you as Colchi IT manager, yes? Good, Danny. Yes. Colchi IT manager. I'm not a Colchi. <laughs> It says Colchi Corp. <laughs> so uh, only the Irish people in the room understand that. Yes. <laughs> so um, Redneck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm translating for the people. OK, so explain what we're seeing here. Uh, so the first thing we can see is a alert has been triggered, which is an RDC or a remote desktop connection from a public IP address. We've got all the information there. We can see the source IP address. We can see the destination IP address. And we can basically see everything that's happened. Second thing was the IP scanning tool being detected. Again, all the information that you can normally see through the event in the unified audit is here in this one screen. So we don't need to go anywhere else to make a decision about this. So we can see what ran it. We can see the user that ran it. We can see what happened. Obviously, it was blocked because blocking things is what we do. But that doesn't mean that you don't want to know when this happens on one of your servers. The last thing was. OK, you new user. I think there's more the scroll up if you scroll up. Oh, where? You can scroll up to the top of the screen. Not the last more, thing, so. then. OK, so a new user account has been created. Worth mentioning the information message here. So alerts that go to the cyber hero response or your own response are warnings or severe alerts. Information messages are still logged because they may be supporting information. So creating a user account is not something you want your MDR to respond to. But maybe adding it to the admin group is something you want them to respond to. So the information's logged so they can see that the account was created just before. And then the alert at the top shows, pulling straight from the Windows event log, that it was added to the group. OK, all the information. I want to be back to bad guy. So okay, can I go, go back, back to bad guy and do some more bad back stuff to your here? Hacking. OK, so I'm going to go back to bad guy. And I'm going to, is your warranty still calling you? <laughs> OK, so I'm going to do something that's really bad now. I'm going to, this guy's pissing me off, so I'm going to close him out. And I'm going to run BBCAP. Try to run. Oh, this Threat Locker stuff is great. <laughs> OK, so you know what? Threat Locker's annoying me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to stop Threat Locker from running. And oh my god, tamper protection. <laughs> And I'm just going to keep working on this. And what else can I do on this machine? So I've turned off Threat Locker. I wonder if I can go into System Config. See if I can reboot this maybe in uh, PowerShell. How do you open System Config to? Is there anything else? Like, is there anything else I would do bad for now? I'm going to reboot in safe mode. We're reboot trying to disable, safe mode. We're trying to disable the Threat Locker service. Pick. Did you put your phone on Do Not Disturb? Because I know someone's looking at this. I don't think so. OK, I'm going to try and stop it here. No, I'm trying to disable it. No. What's the Red Rabbit script? Let me go and download the Red Rabbit script, see if I can use that in that IP scanner. Is that a text? No, nope, not yet. Oh, wait there, my remote desktop just ended. And you know what, why my remote desktop just ended? Oh, hello. OK, let's see if we can do this. Hello. Hello, this is the Threat Locker Security Operations Team. We're a cyber hero contacting you due to some suspicious behavior we're seeing on your device. Am I speaking with Kyle Reese? Yes, this is Kyle. Perfect. Uh, we did see some suspicious behavior on your device and have locked it down. But before I share further details, can you verify the PIN code I've sent via SMS? Oh, it's 424269. Perfect. Appreciate that verification there. Just to let you know, we did see a public IP address establish a remote connection to your server. This is, oh, my server. Yes, on your server there. Ooh, and then we okay. saw some advanced IP scanner attempt to execute. It was denied. And then we saw a privileged account created within the server. OK, Following I didn't that, do any of those things. 
<laughs> yeah, following that, unfortunately, we did see an attempt for Mimi Cats to execute, <gasps> as well as the threat locker service to be stopped, which Ooh. we responded by locking down your machine. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. We'll be building up a report for you, and we'll give you further details. We're also going to plan out some steps to remediate this for you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You're welcome. That was cool. I like that our support put a really professional voice on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK, now I can actually put my phone in to do not disturb. They should have used your voice on AI. It would have been better. Oh, <laughs> So uh, if we can switch back to uh, the slideshow as well. But look, I, think, I think the point is, guys, we're here to get your back. Whether you're using ThreatLocker Ops and using as, as a tool yourself, we're getting to see these alerts. We're getting to remediate them for you faster. And if you're a ThreatLocker cyber hero detection and response, managed detection and response, or whether you're just using ThreatLocker Ops, it makes the ThreatLocker product better. Because the more we understand our product, the more we manage our product, the better we can make it for you and the more attacks we see. Now, as we can see, nothing bad happened because nothing could happen because we operate in a least privileged world. Advanced IP scanner couldn't run. I couldn't stop Threat Locker. I couldn't run Mimi Cats. I did connect to the server because some fool opened RDP <laughs> and left it on the internet. But ultimately, this responded with, hey, someone's got your back. Someone's watching you. And they're the same people that are used to watching you all the time. If you want to find out more about the Threat Locker Cyber Hero Detection Response, we do have some special deals for those who are signing up at the show. Would, why wouldn't we? So the account managers at the Threat Locker booth can talk to you about it. Now, the nice thing about this is we can offer it cheaper. Now, I know cheaper is never good, but think about this. We know if you're in a secured environment, the likelihood of a real attack happening is lower, which means our operation center get less alerts. So rather than you paying that traditional $5 plus per month on detection response, if you're in secured mode, you're going to be paying closer to $2 with some special deals going on here today. So come by our booth, talk to us, schedule an onboarding call with us. I think we're pushed out to about two weeks now. Schedule an onboarding call with us where we'll get you up and running and we will start monitoring all of your logs and all of the alerts. Whether you're using our detection response or not, all of the core alerts will be built into your account. You can opt out of them, so you can create override alerts. But if we find a new vulnerability, if we find a new exploit, it automatically gets added to your Threat Locker Ops accounts, and you will see that. Maybe you want to re-pull up one last time, if we can switch back to the computer, the, what we see now on Ops with all the Mimi cats and everything. Uh, community or the Ops? No, in the Ops on the computer that was oh, compromised. Oh, sorry, of course. Oh, the cyber hero cleared it down. No, it's in remediation on the right. Oh, so, so what happens when the cyber heroes down. move it to remediation, it will go into the right side. And we can see all of the history here before. We can see the detection of Mimi cats. We can see if we click on those, we can see any links to the MITRE attack framework or anything like that, uh, any attack train. We can see the severity of the alerts, and we can see everything that's happening. And also, when we go through all of the other tabs, we can see all executions, all network traffic, again, in one place. And if Rob does decide this is a good machine, which probably not because it's open on the internet and we've been looking I'm for now. I'm not taking the responsibility of removing lockdown on that machine. We can click the remove lockdown much. button and bring the machine back online in a cleared state. So if we do overreact. The other nice thing about Threat Locker Ops, we will create a run book with you. We will discuss what your needs are, which policies should apply, which policies shouldn't apply, how aggressive you want to be on lockdown. Typically, in our default scenario, if we see something like the first two things, we're going to send that challenge to you. Scan you your QR code, tell me you're the IT guy, or things might get messy here. <laughs> if, if, we don't get, if we don't get a response from the QR code, the cyber hero wasn't, under our default runbook, wasn't locking you down for running advanced IP scanner or trying to. But they are monitoring it in a much closer fashion to see if you do something that maybe crosses that line. Stopping the threat locker service, they will lock you down for trying to do that after getting that prompt, or trying to stop it at least. So they will work with Can you. Can we explain what lockdown is, by the way? Because I think lockdown is really cool, and not everybody might understand it. It's basically block everything. Okay, so, so it's block network traffic, it's block ex executions, it's stop everything from running, it blocks access to all storage. So even somebody physically sitting at a device trying to get up to no good and that machine is locked down, they're not going to be able to do anything. 
good example of why this is important. Anyone here ever had a machine isolated by a SARC or an MDR? Yep. Okay, you know what happens when you isolate a server? Takes it off the internet. Stops the RDP session, all's good. Unless ransomware is currently encrypting files. At which point, those files continue to encrypt in the background, whereas lockdown, and we have two options. We have isolate and lockdown. Lockdown means nothing can run. You can talk to ThreatLocker, you can unisolate it, you can do things like that, but you cannot change a file. You cannot elevate anything. You cannot click on the start menu. If you're physically in front of the machine, it's basically in what we call your fired mode. Bricked. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and it's a very useful button when you're about to term someone. You just press that red button, their machine becomes unusable. And then when you remove it, it gets cleared out again. So I think if we can switch back to the slide just for the final closeout. And OK, so that's Threat Locker Zero uh, detection and response. Hopefully, you guys will look at our managed stuff. If you're interested, like I said, go to the booth. The guys can help you out. They can get quotes for you. And if you have any other questions for me, please join us. And we thank everyone here who is a Threat Locker customer already and are using our tools. And hopefully, we get a few more partners and customers going forward. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you all, you all very much.